go to lunch on time. Uh, while you coming back, let me make some housekeeping announcement. First, of course, you are here. You will be rewarded by having a certificate issued in your name. So this afternoon, we will explain to you how do you get your own certificate. This time, it will be online certificate, one of a kind, only one in the world for you. Second, some uh, of our participants asked um, if all the slides would be available for download. So let me tell you, all of our sessions here in this event, we have recorded in a video format, and the video clip will be available for you to view later on on um, Thailand Cyber University website in a few weeks. So do all the slides, mm -hmm. if the speaker give us the permission. So um, once again, all of the video recordings will be available on TCU website in a few weeks, including slides. Okay, I have already answered. Um, I marked them in red color. Uh, one of our participants asked, oh, so many good sessions in this afternoon, he could not split himself. So no worries, in a few weeks, you can watch video clips on TC website. And another friend asked if um, our slides will be available for download. Like uh, Dr. Christian Stark said, he has already declared his slide as o, uh, CCBY, NCSA? Just CCBY? Okay, his slide will be available for you to um, you reuse without having to ask for his permission. You need to always uh, credit him back and uh, no um, selling for commercial reason. And uh, you need to also use the same logo, CCBY NCSA, the same as Thai MOOC. Yeah, same license as Thai MOOC, everything. Thank you very much. So welcome back to the final session of IEC 2019 keynote session. Next, we're going to have keynote speech from Korea. We have Dr. Hun Ju So. Please allow me to briefly introduce him. Dr. So is director of the National Center of Multicultural Education at Division of People's Learning Participation Promotion in the National Institute of Lifelong Learning Education, or NIA, Republic of Korea. Previously, he worked as office director and director of KMOOC operation, which he developed a MOOC-based international exchange program between Republic of Korea and Thailand. He joined NIA since 2016 as director of the Office of Public Relations and International Affairs. Today, he is about to share with us on In Search of University-Based Lifelong Learning, the case of life program. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Professor Dr. Hun Ju So. Uh, good morning to you, and it, was, it is my great honor to be here and to deliver something different topic uh, that you heard from yesterday till uh, this morning. Uh, I want to talk about uh, university-based university lifelong education. Uh, in the case, the case of uh, Republic Korean. Uh, see this one? Yes, in search of university-based lifelong education, introduction of life project. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here's uh, our seven contents, but the, the last one will be a reference for you and maybe government officials of Ministry of, of Mercy. So, firstly, uh, yesterday, I learned 
something very important from Deputy Secretary of Mercy. Uh, like Korea, Thailand has very serious social issues. Uh, that is, low birth rate. In other words, the population in Thailand is declining, right? Right? Uh, on the other side, it means people living longer, right? No? Life ex expenses are increasing. So some people and I am expecting to living around at a hundred, right? Maybe at the end of my life, people can live a hundred thirty, <laughs> forty, yes. So uh, there's some words, keywords highlighted on the slide. The first one here, well, Fourth Industrial Revolution, and uh, together with the change in job pattern patterns, as well as the extension of average lifespan, as I mentioned before, just before, and low birth and aging population. In short, less born, longer live. Right? And also, so, in this changing society, adult learners, actually, in fact, people, they want continue their learning, education. Because, as mentioned before, the change in job pattern means uh, in the near future, big data and AI-based robots will replace our simple and repetitive jobs, right? Already in some factories and in our home, some robots already replaced our work, right? Especially cleaning. And in, in, the, in the factory, the AI machines, they scanning the surface of some materials and find faults from the materials, and then uh, like a corrected, right? It's kind of smart factory, right? So here's, in Korea, we can uh, identify some trends in lifelong learning participations. Here, uh, this one, yeah, no? 2010, uh, around 30.5%. And 2018, 42%, 42.8% of people, they participate in uh, the kind of lifelong education. And then he, below them, I showed the changes in working and elderly population in the Republic of Korea. So here, the, you can see the children, the ages 0 to 14, continuously decreasing. On the other hand, the elderly, 65 and above, older, the ratio continuously increasing. Now, Korean society entered into aged society. How about Thailand? Same, the ratio is higher, the rate is higher than Republic of Korea. So, in order to cope with these challenges, what can we do? So what is the essential message of these issues? I think that that is one answer is lifelong education or lifelong learning. So who can, who will provide the service of lifelong learning or lifelong education. Who? Who has the capacity 
and who has the kind of infrastructure for providing lifelong learning for all? Who? Government? Vocational, educational institutions? Private? In, in private sector? Who can provide especially quality lifelong education for all? How many of you are teachers or professors in private and public universities and colleges? How many of you? Raise your hands, please. Yes, around 15. Yes. According to this picture, you might lose your job in the future. Because why? Why, why you might lose your jobs in the future? Sorry? Ah, yes. And also, you may not have enough students to teach, right? Let's born. So in school, you can uh, you can very you can have very difficult to find your students in the class, right? No. You you want to deny <laughs> the future situations? Okay. Anyway, yes. And here is our trend in the uh, newborn babies and total fertility rates continuous to decline, and also. This, the right hand side, the graph shows the trend in total maximum student number to that of the number of high school graduates and new university students. The number of new students, number of new university students. The graph clearly shows here, blue rod indicates the overall, sorry. Yes, the overall number of maximum number, maximum student numbers. So like uh, 2008, around 667,000 students. It's kind of quota for university students, new university students. But here, 2017, the number declining. So 600,000. And if you look at here, the black dot lines. Black dot lines means in the year, for example, this year, the students who enters the university, the number of students who enters the universities. So here, around how much, how many? Can you see it? around over 400,000. So, look at the overall the total number of student number, the maximum student number total, and then look at the black dot line numbers. So there's a gap. So, anyone can go to college or universities. Yes, but differently. University and or college, they have to find their students. So it goes, it challenges the university and college, right? Yes. And here, in, in Republic of Korea, the awareness of needs for higher life uh, lifelong education, especially higher lifelong education. It's quite high. Around over 77% of people, they agreed the South Korea, Republic of Korea, we need higher lifelong education. Higher means higher education institutions, they provide the lifelong education service for all.
especially adult learners. So, like this. And then we ask the South Korean, the Republic of Korean peoples, are you going to participate in higher lifelong education? And they say, most of them say, yes. Yes. So, over 75%, they say, yes, we are going to uh, engage. We are going to apply for lifelong education provided by higher education institutions. Why? Why? Why most people in Korea, adult, they answered, they agreed. They will participate in higher lifelong education. The answer is university or college, in other words, higher education institutions has the capacity and infrastructure to provide quality lifelong education. So, here's 2008, the Ministry of Education in Republic of Korea, they already recognized some challenges caused by low birth rate and aging populations. So they start university-based or university-centered lifelong education support project. They start already 10 years ago. And then, since then, they changed their names. And finally, here, 2017, we have two projects. One is project for supporting lifelong education college. This project focused on college. And the other one is project for lifelong learning focused university. So at the time, around 2017, we have two projects. So I think the government authorities, especially finance planning ministry, they pointed out, oh, these two projects maybe they think overlapped. So the Ministry of Education, they integrate these two projects into here, project for supporting universities lifelong education systems, Schles. Yes. So 2017, a total of 15 universities selected, 10 college level models, and school level, two school level models, and three department level models. And also there are 20, uh, 52 departments newly installed, established. In 2018, a total of 21 universities selected, and a total of 68 new departments were open. And around 2007, 2,707 students were enrolled in, that, in those universities. So, since 2008, the university-based lifelong education project achieve something in terms of two points, securing various business operating models that have the formal degree programs exclusively for adult learners. Again, degree programs exclusively for adult learners. Then second, introduction and establishment of arrangements are administrative or academic arrangement for, tailored for both adult learners and learners who are being employed now. So that is a kind of achievement. But still, that project has some limits here. Although vocational high school graduates and adult learners have a high level of awareness as well as 
willingness to participate in university-based lifelong education. Their opportunities for university admissions have still been limited. You know, in Korea, there are about over 400 universities and colleges. But the university or colleges who, which are participating in Chuless project, only over 20. So the adult runners opportunity to enter the higher education institutions are still limited. So that is the one limitations. The second, the existing shoeless project has been a single year support program. So one year program. So how many of you, the project with one year support can implement, introduce and implement this kind of program into university or college? Nobody, actually. It's kind of like a gambling, right? So the partner university of Shuled have not operated their business model on a stable basis. Single year project usually unstable, right? And the third, also the Shuled has supported four year universities only. They do not support college, two or three year college. They, they, they do not. They didn't, actually, yes. So here, adults who are vocational high, high, high school graduates and are being employed also have willingness to join in the further education in order to develop their competencies and skills. But there have been a lack of opportunities for them to go to two to three year colleges that can meet their needs. Yes, that is, so there are three limitations. So, only this year, the Ministry of Ed Education, they changed policies. Here, the LIFE project. Originally, the name is University Lifelong Education Support Project, but uh, when I was in charge of this project, we have, we make, we made brand the life, lifelong education at universities for the future of education. So it's L, small letter I, and capital letter F, E. So it's kind of like a imply lifelong education, education for lifelong, something like that. So budget for fiscal year 2019, around uh, 2000, 2001 million US dollars. So last year, we tried hard to persuade National Assembly and Finance Authority to expand, increase our funds to support this very important project. And we get some results. So grants here, for 20 universities and six vocational colleges, they get some fund from the government. Yes. And here, period, total four years. So previously, we support one year, but from this year, the partner university, they can get funds for four years. So it means they can operate their business model on a stable basis, right? Yeah. And main tasks, considering local characteristics and social environment where partner universities are situated, they should establish and implement the mid long-term plan and action tasks for lifelong education system at a university level. This project is university-wide project. So, in a word, LIFE project is to help the university transform 
change their systems into lifelong education friendly or adult friendly education systems. So here is uh, the vision, objectives, and strategy of lifelong, li life, life project. So the vision is strengthening the status and function of university as continuous education institutions. Continuous education institutions. Formerly, most universities and colleges, they focus on the school-aged students. They, do, they didn't focus on the adult learners. So we ask them to change their target learners from school-aged students to adult learners. So it's kind of a seismic uh, change for university or college. So it is very difficult task for university or, or colleges. And objective is enhancing opportunity of adult learners engaging in and make, making use of community-based, university-led lifelong education through establishment and expansion of former degree programs plus non-degree programs for adult learners only, regardless of their employment status. So there are three strategies. So the first one is, is introducing adult-friendly academic and administrative systems on a university level. And second, encouraging partner university to establish mid- and long-term program planning and implementation. The last one, is continue building and serving partner university as continuing education hubs in local so community or lo local society. So, here. In order to be uh, adult learner friendly university or college, they have to do something. We ask the university and college to do something. First one, establish a five-year practical and systemic plan for development of lifelong education systems aligned with the university's overall development vision and strategy. That is the most important things. And second, Establish the lifelong education operation models. We have four operate, operating models. The first one is college level. So, for example, like an education, the school of co teachers' college, maybe they change, transform teachers' college into adult, only college, or faculty, school level. They can change. And also, department level, they can establish the operating models for adult only. Here. So, the, in the case of university, determines an operating model considering the conditions and characteristics of university, demands for lifelong education, and maximum student numbers. The next one. This is quite tricky one, but very difficult, but very essential elements of life project. Securing maximum student number. In other words, formerly in the past, university and college usually have maximum student number for school-aged students. If the university or college enters this pro project, they have to like divide the maximum student number into student, school-aged students, and adult learners. So this task is very difficult for university to do. You have to like uh, 
has the quotas for school aged students to adult learners. So th this is uh, essential but very difficult task for universities and colleges. Yeah. Also, they have the operating degree courses, former degree courses plus non-degree courses. And also they have to establish academic and administrative arrangement for adult learners. You know, after graduate from university or college, usually adult learners, they lost the sense of like a students. So the universities or college, they help them to adopt the university systems, educational systems. So the university or college, they have to uh, establish, introduce some measures to support adult learners. Of course, among them, the full-time teaching steps for adult learners. And also, of course, like admission screenings and target learners' qualifications. They have to check with all these things. Here. And also, uh, curriculum developments for adult learners. And also, teaching and learning manner, ma methods should be developed for learn, uh, adult learners. And also, they have to establish or introduce flexible academic systems. And also quality management of degree programs. Yeah. Yes. And also they have to establish and operate the support arrangement for adult learners. Especially we recommend the Patron University to establish learning, adult learning support centers. You can see the slides here. And also, they need to build a university-wide consensus. Otherwise, they cannot uh, sustain their uh, business. So we ask the university to seek university-wide consensus. Yes. Yes, and also we ask the universities on college, they have to establish the community-based network. Through the network, they can uh, get uh, their students, adult learners. They recruit their adult learners. Otherwise, it is very difficult for them to recruit the adult learners. So it is essential uh, parts of our life project. This is a summary of core requirements. So, so the first one, maximum student number, teaching and on, they have to like a, uh, recruit teaching and um, administrative st staffs and academic administrative arrangement should be established. And also they secure some sustainability for this project. And also they have to choose and establish operating models and also there should be a kind of innovation in curriculum development. And also they build some learning environment for adult learners. And finally, they have to innovate teaching and learning models. So this is a summary of uh, core requirements of life project. And here, the last one is uh, we select the universities or colleges by public meetings. So this is uh, assessment areas and indicators. This, this is just for reference. Yes, that's it. Okay, thank you.